Good day everyone, I am Mary Rose Caldeo and welcome to our English 114 the technical writing class. For the continuation of the topic under reports, I will tackle about the formal report examples and four common reports. My objectives in this lesson were first, to illustrate the examples of formal report and second, to explain the four common reports. First, I will discuss the formal report examples. The following examples that I will show later provides a long and formal technical report. This report is the result of a research conducted for the city of Winslow, Georgia. The audience is made up of people of both technical and non-technical backgrounds. These were full-time city employees and others are unpaid residents appointed by the mayor to investigate environmental issues. Engineers, environmental consultants, accountants, municipal planners, administrators, attorneys, real estate analysts, and public relations specialists are among the paying professionals. Part-time appointees include people who work in a combination of blue-collar and white-collar jobs or who are homemakers. As you can see in the slide, that is an example of formal technical report conducted for the city of Linslow, Georgia. This report is composed of nine parts. As you could remember, it was discussed by the previous reporter. This is what it looks like. First, in the cover title page, it should include the following four pieces of information. We're in first, the project title, that is exactly as it appears on the letter or memo of transmittal. Second, your client's name. Third, your name or the name of your organization. And fourth, date of submission. To make your title page or cover distinctive, you might want to place a simple illustration in it. However, do not clutter the page. Use a visual only if it reinforces a main point and if it can be done simply and tastefully. Next, letter or memo of transmittal, wherein it gives the readers a taste of what is ahead. As you can see that it has a list of project title as it appears on title page. Then, it gives brief statements of the project information and it provides major point from report. Third, the table of contents. Your content page acts as an outline. Many readers go there right away to grasp the structure of the report and then return repeatedly to locate report sections of most interest to them. It uses white space, indenting, and bold to accent organization of report. Fourth, the list of illustrations, wherein it usually listed on a separate page right after the table of contents. It includes illustration titles as they appear in the text. Fifth, the executive summary, wherein we all know that no formal report would be complete without an executive summary. For its content, it summarizes purpose and scope of report, then it describes major findings and conclusions as well as it includes main recommendation from report text. Sixth, the introduction, wherein it views this section as your chance to prepare both technical and non-technical readers for the discussion ahead, give information on the report's purpose, scope, and format, as well as a project description. 7. The discussion sections, wherein it makes up the longest part of formal reports and are written for the most technical members of your audience. You can focus on facts and opinions, 
demonstrating the technical expertise that the reader expects from you. Eighth, the conclusions and recommendations. The points may or may not have been mentioned in the body of the report depending on the length and complexity of the document. For you not to be confused, the difference between conclusions and recommendations is that conclusions are the fictions or beliefs based on the findings of your study, whereas the recommendations or actions you're suggesting based on your conclusions. In this section, it provides a complete list of conclusions and recommendations for technical and management readers. Lastly, end material, wherein one kind of end material appendices is mentioned in the context of the discussion section. Note that formal reports may also contain work cited pages or bibliographies which should be included in end materials. Alright, let's proceed to four common reports. Report types differ by organization and can be generated in either informal or structured report format. The four types listed here are only a small sample of what you would be asked to write on the job. If you can learn these, you will be able to manage all other types that come your way. Number 1. Equipment Evaluations any company employs some kind of equipment that must be purchased, maintained, or replaced. Since companies invest too much capital in this aspect of the business, evaluating equipment is a critical task. Equipment evaluations provide comprehensive information on how machinery, tools, computer applications, and other equipments have worked. Take note that an equipment evaluation can either concentrate on problems or it can go to recommend a change of equipment. Whatever the focus, an equipment assessment must include a well-documented summary of how equipment work. Number 2. Progress or Periodic Reports Some reports are designed to cover events that happen during a particular time period. They supply administrators or customers with information about the work being done on a given project. The Project Completion Report is a category of progress report that can be published as a structured report after the project is finished. The majority of the data in progress and periodic reports were objective. Nonetheless, both of them, especially progress reports, can be written persuasively at times. After all, you're attempting to make the most possible case for the job you've done. Number 3. Problem Analysis Any company deals with both routine and complicated issues. Routine issues are often dealt without any paperwork. They are addressed and eventually resolved. Other issues, on the other hand, must often be identified in papers particularly if they include a large number of individuals, are difficult to fix, and have been simmering for a long time. Take note that readers may find comprehensive descriptions of issues in fields such as personal, equipment, products, and services in problem analysis reports. The majority of the LEMA studies had both evidence and viewpoints. You must make special attempts as a writer to distinguish the two so most readers like to be able to draw their conclusions about the situation. Number 4. Recommendation Reports For the recommendation reports, take note that you must rely on reliable data to back up recommendations that concern staff, facilities, processes, products, as well as services. That will be all and I hope that you have learned something from me. Have a good day ahead and keep safe.